hold him like this. This is how I'm going to be holding him. I have the head. See that? It's up here by my face. So whoever gets bitten, it's on me. Uh, none of you guys will be bitten. You guys get to still touch the snake no matter what. Naturalist Tony Ware did his best to dispel any fear of a corn snake wrapped around his arm. But for some in the audience at the Hillcrest Heights Library, his reassurances fell right on to deaf ears. I don't like snakes. They're gross. They're nasty. So, do. But I own a guinea pig, and we used to have a frog, and we have fish. That's the only animals we have at home. That's it. But no snakes. Ew, no. The librarian's reaction aside, most of the three dozen children at one of the library system's most popular summer programs responded to the snake with more fascination than fear, enjoying the chance to get up close and touchy with a whole array of creatures. In a reading area meant to look like a circus with seals and elephants on the walls, naturalists from Watkins Regional Park showed off a menagerie in the center ring that included a hissing cockroach from Madagascar, an eastern box turtle with a closable shell, and a thin-skinned toad who couldn't be handled and not because he caused warts. The reason we actually can't touch it is because it has very absorbent skin. So did you, everyone raise your hands and put some lotion on this morning. Put some lotion on it, yeah. All right, so that's gonna go right into the skin if you touch it. So it'll go right into the skin, right through it, go into the bloodstream, and it can make our toad sick. What did you learn today? I learned about all the animals. Did you have a favorite animal that you saw today? Uh-huh, the snake and a turtle. Did you touch that snake? Yes, I did. What did it feel like? felt like... It felt like it was about to bite me, and it was all soft, <laughs> and it was squishy. Do you like snakes? Yes. Yeah. I have a pet one. Oh, what kind do you have? Milk. What do you feed your snake? Uh, I feed him spiders, cockroaches, and and if he's really been good around my mouth, I sometimes I feed him worms because he really likes worms. <laughs> so that's his dessert. Yeah. My biggest thing is I like people not to have fears of animals. Uh, I know a lot of the times people have kind of irrational fears in terms of like snakes and like bugs and stuff, but just to kind of understand how they fit into our ecosystem and how they really don't mean us any harm if you do get hurt. If the science at Hillcrest Heights was all about shell games and slithering up, over at the Glen Arden Library, it was a mix of bubbles, beakers, and baking soda. Sponsored by the chemical company GlaxoSmithKline, the science in the summer program let kids discover the difference between chemical and physical reactions. How something called chromatography starts with a single spot of ink and so much more. Hang it in your cylinder. I'm not going to do it all the way. Using the folded edge. Don't do it yet. Using the folded edge so the bottom just touches the water. So Why is chemistry important for kids at this age? Well, now we are looking at STEM. And kids are so used to pencil, paper, and the textbooks, so just to venture out and actually see what science is, how they can use it in their daily lives is what is important, and it's real world situations that they can truly see now. Properly protected like real scientists with goggles on their faces, the attentive youngsters used authentic equipment like graduated cylinders, along with ordinary scissors and construction paper, to show that chopped up paper is still paper, but baking soda and vinegar mixed together, like so many ingredients used in the kitchen, can't be recovered once they go into the pot. You told me that pancakes can't be turned back into eggs and wheat. How do you know all that? Uh, my mom's a cook, mm -hmm. so I know why, why, why eggs and um, wheat can't go back because they're because they get heated up and then they can't, they can't change back. Well, what kind of change is that? That's not a physical change, it's what kind of change? A chemical. So while school may be out for the summer, learning can still be checked out at the library. As one parent who brought all five of his children to both science programs can attest. The first thing I saw, they said, walking, nature, something. In the library? I said, wow, so I was curious. So I just got home, I said, guys, let's go. So we just got in here and then, I mean, everything was, uh, it was fun. The library system has been doing wonderfully. TV 96 and 38, this is Dave Zimmer.